Peace, Israel, and Yah bless. <clears throat> now, before you take a look at this video, I need you to look at Fallen Rogue Gangster Outlaw Renegade Thug That Angels first. This is a video that's a continuation of that, but I will list this video by another name. This video is titled The Snake in Eden. Once again, the title of this video, or this video is entitled, The Snake in Eden. So I'll go ahead and uh, grab your books. We're trying to validate, or we're going to validate, that this snake is indeed a man. <clears throat> uh, and the first video presented that information, and I'm going to be a little bit more clear and concise on this video so you understand clearly that this is indeed a man and nothing else and not a talking snake okay so once again grab your books tighten up your jaws do not look to the left or to the right we are to look the straight way okay and if we don't we will get hit straight in the mouth and that's how we receive correction and stripes alright let's go ahead and start at Genesis chapter 2 We'll start at Genesis chapter 2. Once again, the title of this video is The Snake in Eden. All right. All right. Genesis chapter 2, verse 8 and 9 is what we're going to read out of this chapter. Okay. And then we'll come down a little lower. Genesis chapter 2, verse 8 reads And Yah planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Verse 9. And out of the ground made Yah to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. All right. Now, clearly we see here that the Most High planted a garden. East word in Eden. Eden is the place. Eden is the landmass. The garden is something entirely different with parameters. Okay? So the garden, Eden, is not the garden. The garden just happens to be in Eden. Okay? Eden is this vast landmass. So the Most High in Eden planted a special garden eastward in Eden and there he placed that man so I hope you understand that and in the midst thereof in the midst of this garden was the tree of knowledge of good and evil and also the tree of life keep those two points in mind let's jump down to Genesis chapter 2 chapter 2 we're gonna go jump down to verse 16 and verse 17 Verse 16 reads, And Yah commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely. That's verse 16. Verse 17, But, stipulation, But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. So what we have here is law. What we have here is a commandment. What we have here is an instruction. You may eat up these trees, but up this tree right here, you shall not eat. For if you do, you shall surely die. So here you have Adam being given law. Now, as I have spoken with some individuals when discussing the book, they are JC believers, idol worshippers, idolaters, and their claim to fame uh, or their nonsense is that uh, man can keep the law okay uh, man can't keep the law so therefore JC had to come and and die from, from you know for man and all this other foolishness okay some of you out here are parents <clears throat> so let's let me ask you a simple question in your household or in your parents household when you were a child or in your household now while you are adults, what rule were you ever given as a child 
by your parents that you could not obey. <clears throat> not saying what you wanted to and what you didn't want to obey. I'm asking you, which rule did your parents give you that you just flat out could not keep? Secondly, what rule do you give your child in your house? If you're an adult right now, you're a parent. What rule have you given them that they just cannot keep at all? The answer to that is none. Okay, so if you're just a regular person and you present rules, commandments, laws in your house, your child is going to be able to keep them. Now, whether they want to or not is based on their decision making. But there's no such thing as a parent giving a child a rule that they just cannot keep. And we're just regular people. So for someone to fix their mouth and their thinking to say that the Most High will create a man, put him on the earth, the Most High know all things before it happens and knows all beings. He's the all-knowing. You're going to tell me that the Most High is going to present a law to a man that he created and give him a law that he cannot keep? That is blasphemous. Now let's continue. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. <clears throat> and verse 18 reads, And Yah said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. I will make him a help that's fit for him or suited for him. Okay, so the Most High is going to make Adam a companion. All right, now we're going to jump down to Genesis, still in chapter 2. We're going to go to verse 20. And Adam gave names to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help meet for him. So Adam was brought before all the beasts of the field. Okay. And he was to name them. All right. And they were called after the names of Adam had named them. But for Adam, there was not found any help meet for him. There was not a mate found for him. So if there wasn't any found for him, that means there was a search made. So there were other people on the earth and there was a search made for a help meet for him but none met the standard. So the Most High created a woman from his rib because the other people on the earth did not meet the standard. Keep that in mind. All right, now, so no help meet was found for Adam. The point being made here is found. If you're going to find something, chances are you'll be looking for it. Now, Genesis chapter 3. We will read the entire Genesis chapter 3. All right, so now moving to Genesis chapter 3, and it reads, Now the serpent was more supple, cunning, than any beast of the field. These beasts are men, <clears throat> which Yah had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have Yah said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Have, okay, let me reread that. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath Yah said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Verse 2, and the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, <clears throat> but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, Yah has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest you die. So, <clears throat> this serpent asked the woman. This serpent is a man. So this man asked the woman, Did the Most High tell you not to eat from this tree? And the woman said, yeah, he told us, not only should we not eat from it, he told us we shouldn't even touch it. <clears throat> All right. So a lesson that fits well with this is one that you need to really take a very close look at. It's called failure to follow instructions will lead to your own destruction. OK, so she is telling once again, she is reiterating to this man exactly what her instructions were. We're not to touch this tree and we're not to eat from the fruit thereof. Okay? But the man knew. This man knew that that was the instruction from the start. 
All right. That's why he asked that question. Let's continue. Verse four. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. So the first thing that the average curious human would want to know, well, number one, how did this man know that the Most High instructed Adam and Eve not to eat from that tree? <clears throat> That's number one. Number two, what gave him the audacity, okay, to let them, to tell her that, ah, you're not going to die, you'll be all right. You can eat of that tree, okay? So there's something for you to examine and to think about in this whole dialogue here. All right, now, verse 5. For y'all doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, lowercase, knowing good and evil. <clears throat> so this tree is going to give you some knowledge that you really were not supposed to have. And that's one way to put it. Verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. So she chose to disregard the instructions given to her at the first. And for her desire for quote unquote wisdom to be wise, she felt, okay, let me eat this fruit. And not only did she eat it, she ate it and gave it to her husband. Okay? So keep these things in mind. We're going to come back to it. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. Once again, they have access to information that they should not have. Okay? And they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of Yah walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Yah among the trees of the garden. Verse 9. And Yah called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Of course, the Most High knows where he is. Verse 10, and he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, I was, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. Verse 11, now think of this, he hid himself. How can he, hid, how can he hide from the presence of the Most High? Verse 11, and he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten? Of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat. Most high already know what has taken place already. He knew this was going to happen before he made Adam. Verse 12. <clears throat> and the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. All right. Verse 13. And Yah said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. All right. Let's stop right there. We're going to make this stop here at verse 13 so we can cover a few things. That way I can give you an understanding of what's taking place. And, you know, I read the text, but I explain the text in common sense so you can better grasp it. Now, what we're seeing here, Adam and Eve have been given specific instruction not to eat from this tree. Not only do you not eat from this tree, you do not touch this tree. <clears throat> what we have is a man a man that comes into this garden. <clears throat> now, I want you to keep a few things in mind. We have the landmass of Eden. That's the place. And in Eden, the most high planted a garden eastward, a separate place within Eden, garden. <clears throat> now, all the other nations dwell thereabouts in Eden all the other men that were created. They're dwelling in the midst of Eden. However, on the east of Eden, the Most High had his garden where he had Adam and Eve and they were separate from the rest of the nations that were in Eden. <clears throat> okay? So I want you to keep that concept in mind. Now, every nation is giving a designated 
dwelling place. Okay, so when you think of this man, this serpent, this snake, he was not in the garden to begin with because the Most High put that garden over there for the dwelling of Adam and Eve. <clears throat> so the man, the serpent, was dwelling somewhere in Eden in his specific dwelling place. And somehow he made it into the garden to deliberately, let me say this again, to deliberately speak contrary to the Most High's word. Okay? So he's trespassing. <clears throat> and I'm going to validate his trespass against the Most High as this lesson continues. So what he is doing is he's trespassing in a place that was not prepared for him. That's number one. And number two, he is contradicting the Most High's word. He knew exactly what the Most High's instructions and commandments were. And he is deliberately and maliciously speaking words contrary to the Most High to lead others astray. Keep all those things in mind. Okay? So now we want to look at a few things. We want to look at responsibility so the first thing that happens is most high gave instruction <clears throat> to Adam gave instruction to Eve <clears throat> that's coming directly from the most high the serpent speaks to this woman <clears throat> the man talks to this woman <clears throat> this woman disregards the counsel of the most high and followed after the counsel of a man, precepts of men. <clears throat> she then feeds her husband that which is forbidden. And her husband knew this fruit was forbidden, but yet he ate thereof. So now when the Most High asked Eve, <clears throat> well, why did you do this thing? What have you done? Her first thing was, well, the man over here, he told me I could I could eat this. He told me I wouldn't surely die. He said it was okay. So she can actually look at the most high and tell the most high, well, I disregarded you so I could listen to this man. And then the most high said, okay, well, let me deal with you, Adam. Why did you do this? And Adam, well, the woman gave it to me. <clears throat> that she gave it to me. That's why I ate it. So Eve disregarded the most high and took counsel from a man. And Adam disregarded the most high and took counsel from his wife. <clears throat> and so when I bring you this law and deliver to you the words of the most high, from his prophets <clears throat> and I speak on the dietary law and I speak on all the laws pertaining to the feast days the first thing you say is well Paul told me this and Paul told me that <laughs> and I'm gonna let you understand clearly by the time this lesson is over exactly who Paul is and what Peter is, and what JC is, and the rest of them. <clears throat> they are those who are of the serpent seed. They will teach you and tell you things that are in direct opposition to the Most High's word. And so by the end of this lesson, you will be able to identify serpent seed on the earth. Okay? Now, let's continue. We did stop at verse 13, and we're reading the whole of chapter 3. Now, so we are in Genesis chapter 3. We stopped at verse 13. All right. Now, we're going to go to verse 14. Ah, let's start at verse 13. Verse 13. And Yah said <clears throat> unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Verse 14. And Yah said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, 
Thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. You are cursed above all men. And upon thy belly shall thou go, and dust shall thou eat all the days of thy life. You feed a snake dust for all the days of his life, he's going to kill him. Okay, so this is a man. This is not a snake. Okay. And I will, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now, a snake. When we speak of a snake, you know, you hear the term, if you're talking about someone, you will say, oh, you got to watch him. He's a snake. What does this mean? <laughs> exactly what it means. It means he's low down. He's dirty. <clears throat> he is untrustworthy. He's someone to keep an eye on. <clears throat> He's a liar. He's hypocritical. Cannot be trusted, etc. And that's what we call a snake. We use that term today. Oh, you got to watch him. He's a snake. Untrustworthy man. A man that you cannot trust. A man that you have to keep an eye on. A man that's low down. Unscrupulous person no integrity okay evil person you cannot lay down in bed with a snake he'll bite you can't trust him okay so now let's get back to verse 16 of genesis chapter 3 unto the woman he said i will greatly multiply thy sorrows and thy con and and thy conception in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children and thy, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Verse 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Curse is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. <clears throat> all the days of thy life. Verse 18. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Verse 19. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. So, clearly here, the Most High is indicating that Adam is made from dust. And from the dust in which he came is the dust in which he's going to be returned. All right. So in other words, Adam has had an appointed time to die. Verse 12. <clears throat> and Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. All living what? <clears throat> That's the next thing. She didn't. Now keep in mind all the animals were made before people. Okay. So keep everything in context. Verse 21. Unto Adam also, and to his wife, did y'all make goats, make, make coats of skin, and clothe them. Verse 22. And y'all said, Behold, the man is become as one of us. To know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. So, I've had individuals on this channel who have written things below the channel where you can actually comment. Uh, and his thing was, you know, man was made by God and man was perfect and a whole bunch of other stuff that was just incorrect. But he had no understanding. So I explained the best I could to him. I, I do not have the power to give him understanding. The most I will have to do that. I can't. But to that individual that wrote, those things and anyone else that's thinking like-minded if man was intended to live forever and there's no such scripture to indicate that does not exist if you think man was perfect and there's no such thing here's something to let you know that man never ever was intended to live forever and i will reread that again verse 22 of genesis chapter 3 and Yah said, Behold, 
that man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. So the Most High said, hey, this man has gotten like one of us. Us who? The Most High and his angels. Because <clears throat> he's got those by tens of thousands. And his angels have the appearance of men. <clears throat> so this man has the type of knowledge that he's not supposed to have. So before he decides to reach forth and grab this tree and eat thereof and live forever, we got to protect this thing. <clears throat> because this man have, will have no bounds. He's already shown that he is rebellious and will not adhere to law <clears throat> and will not follow instruction, i.e. commandment, i.e. law. So we have to protect this tree of life from this lawless individual because he has demonstrated to us clearly that he will not obey instruction. Now, and we will go to Verse, we're now at verse 23. <clears throat> Therefore, Yah sent him forth from the Garden of Eden, from Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So let's look at this. <clears throat> so the Most High sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So here's what has happened here. Adam <clears throat> is in a garden. <clears throat> separated from all the people of Eden. This garden is just a garden in this place called Eden. <clears throat> so once Adam is kicked out of this garden, he is now in the midst of the nations. <clears throat> He's now out there with everybody else. <clears throat> people he had not seen before, haven't heard before, and most likely he didn't know existed. <clears throat> So now what's happening here, Adam is no longer under the protection of the Most High, is what you've got. All right? So he is cast out. All right? So now, <clears throat> verse 24. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the gate of Eden cherubims, and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So, Adam is driven out. And the Most High puts up cherubims and a flaming sword to protect the tree of life to make sure that this rebellious man does not reach and take a hold thereof and eat the fruit thereof. Which lets you know man was never intended to live forever anyway. How could he? The Most High is the only one that's forever if you have read and understood this book. <clears throat> All right. So we understand clearly there that covers in a nutshell that man was never intended to live forever in the first place. And that's why the Most High protected that tree of life to make sure that he didn't eat thereof to live forever. So that knocks down your little theory thinking that all oh, that man is perfect, number one. And two, that man was going to live forever. You haven't you haven't read this book to even think that. Now, so we have done the entire Genesis chapter three. So we understand clearly that this snake is trespassing, number one, and he is doing what is malicious intent to misguide, misinterpret, and to be in that give instruction that's directly in opposition to the Most High. So that's his intent. That's the intent of the snake. That's the intent of the serpent who is a man. And understand that also that is the intent of this serpent seed. All right. So his children will do the same thing. This is a man. Keep that in mind. All right. Now we're going to go to Genesis chapter four. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. All right? And we will read what the woman says when she had her first child. All right? Genesis chapter 4, verse 1 reads, And Adam knew his wife, knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, child number 1, and said, I have gotten a man-child from Yah. 
Okay. So all she said here when this boy was born, Cain, the firstborn, is that, hey, I've gotten a man child from the Most High. All right. Now, verse 2. And she again bare his brother, Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. Once again, keeper of sheep. Governor David. Captain David. Okay. Prince David. He was also a keeper of the sheep. And that's important. Now, let's jump down to verse 11. Same chapter, chapter 4, Genesis. We're going to jump down to, to verse 11. Verse 11 of chapter 4, Genesis reads, And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thine hand. So this man is cursed from the earth. So when he plant his crops or whatever it is he may do, the earth will not yield her increase to him. All right. So this man, Cain, is cursed from the earth. And so was Adam. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> For his transgression. All right. Now, so here we are at verse. Now, let's jump down. So we're dealing with Cain being cursed from the earth. Adam was also cursed from the earth for his transgression as well. Okay, so now we're going to go to Genesis chapter, we're still in chapter 4, we're going to jump down to verse 14. And verse 14 reads, Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. So now, Cain is driven out. <clears throat> All right? So now, we know good and well, we read previously, okay, where the man and his woman, Eve, where they were driven out. So he drove out the man, and he, which was in 20, uh, verse 24 of Genesis chapter 3. Most high drove him out. <clears throat> Okay, so Adam and Eve are driven out of the garden. <clears throat> Cain is driven out too, because he's got to be born outside of the garden, <clears throat> if we're going according to this story. Okay, so they were driven out, and then here comes, here comes Cain. <clears throat> okay, uh, now as we go in, as we go into this whole thing, as we deal with Cain. And we're at verse 4, uh, chapter 4, verse 14. Cain is actually the Most High. Cain understands that the Most High will turn his face away from him, which means Cain, who is the seed of the serpent, he cannot deal with the Most High because the Most High will hide his face from him. Okay, the Most High will be inaccessible to him and his seed. <clears throat> All right, you know, we're going to get into that in a little bit more detail as this lesson, uh, as this lesson goes on to where the Most High, we read clearly here, Genesis chapter 4, verse 14, okay, that the Most High, 414, Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the land, okay? Now, and we'll go to Genesis one, one verse down, Genesis chapter 4, verse 15. And verse 15 reads, And Yah said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be upon him sevenfold. And Yah set a mark upon Cain, lest any find him should kill him. So there's a mark upon this man. Cain is a marked man to identify exactly who he is. So there's something upon Cain and upon Cain's seed that separates them from anyone on the earth. Okay, that way he can be clearly identified. All right? And anyone that kills him, sevenfold vengeance upon their head. Okay? So that was the, the decree that was sent out to all the people of the land at the time. That no one is to raise a hand against Cain or, you know, sevenfold will come upon them. All right? Now, let's go to Genesis Chapter 4 still, we're going to go one chap, one verse down, uh, verse 16. And verse 16 reads, 
And Cain went out from the presence of Yah and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. Once again, we've got we've got Eden, we've got the garden, and the garden is east word in Eden. So he went to the east of Eden. So he's pretty much right outside the garden or or thereof where this land of Nod is. Land of Nod is like a city already that's already up and running. And that's how he's able to go over there and take a wife. Okay, because this woman is already had to be at least of his age, you would presume. Okay, but there's a woman there and he goes and have children over there. Okay, and this woman comes from like, you know, we've already discussed all of this. Okay, in, in the video that that's before this. So everyone should know exactly where to look to find those answers. All right. Now, let's jump straight down to Genesis chapter 4, verse 25. Verse 25 reads, And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son, and called his name Seth. <clears throat> For Yah, she said, hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. So remember, enmity between the serpent seed and the woman seed. The serpent seed is the seed of that man. That man that speaks contrary to the Most High's law, commandment, and is all of the Most High's instructions. He is in opposition to the Most High. That's it. <clears throat> so, this woman is letting you know what the difference in these two seed lines are. So you can be clear. Excuse me. And I'm going to reread that. We're at Genesis chapter 4, verse 25. And Adam knew his wife again. And she bore, and she bare his son and called his name Seth. Now listen to what the woman says. For Yah, she said, hath appointed me another seed. So she's identifying that Seth is her seed. She's also identifying that Abel is her seed. Let's do it again. Genesis chapter 4 verse 25. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son, and called his name Seth. For Yah, she said, hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel who Cain slew. So Cain is not identified as one of her seed. Because he's not. He's the seed of that man. <clears throat> he's the seed of that man you know as the serpent. That untrustworthy man. That man that will speak contrary to the most highest law. Alright. So so you understand who this woman's seed is. Okay. Her, the woman's seed is, is, is number one, Abel and Seth. <clears throat> Alright. And the woman's seed is the same as the seed of Adam the offspring of Adam, and this man, the serpent seed, his seed does not count, and we're going to get into that in one minute, okay, so we've just read verse 25, now let's read verse 26, verse 26 of Genesis chapter 4 reads, and to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos, then began men to call upon the name of Yah. So, with Enos, then men began to call upon the name of Yah. No one else could. <clears throat> okay? Certainly, the line of Cain could not because the Most High hid his face from Cain and drove Cain away. So, Cain had no access and neither did his seed. Okay? So, keep those things in mind. Now, Let's go to Genesis chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5, verse 1 through 3. And then we're going to go to Genesis chapter 6. We're going to move you through in the correct order so you can gain an understanding of this. Now, <clears throat> Genesis chapter 5 reads, <clears throat> This is the book of the generations of Adam. In other words, this is the book of Adam's seed. <clears throat> In the likeness of Yah made he him, so the Most High made Adam in his own likeness. Verse 2, 
male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. Verse 3. And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. <clears throat> now you didn't hear this from anyone else as far as Adam having a son after his own likeness. You didn't hear that described in the other two boys. <clears throat> okay. Though the woman kind of lets you know this as it pertains to the birth of Seth. Because <clears throat> she was appointed another seed instead of Abel. Okay. So now you see where this is listed from verse 1 all the way through. What you're dealing with is from Adam to Seth, and then the line continues through. You don't hear no mention of anything pertaining to Cain and his people because Cain, the Most High, hid his face from Cain. He doesn't even have access, and the ground has cursed him, and he's a marked man. He's marked throughout the land, so everyone knows who this man is and what he has done. And there's a certain mark that the Most High puts upon folks that upset him. <clears throat> okay? Now... Let's go to Genesis chapter 6. Once again, the title of this is The Snake in Eden. Okay, Eden is the place, the great landmass. The garden is just a specific location. It's not all one and the same. <clears throat> okay, now, verse 6, Genesis, excuse me, verse 1 of Genesis chapter 6 reads, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. All right, let's go ahead and reread that and explain it. Genesis chapter 6, verse 1. And it came to pass when men, that's important, began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. So we know good and well when Adam and Eve got here. Eve was not... Our daughter born unto anyone. She was taken and made from the rib of Adam. This we're aware of. <clears throat> Two, Adam and Eve, at this point, no daughters were born unto them. They had two sons. <clears throat> All right. So, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, these men that they're speaking of are those in Eden. <clears throat> Adam and Eve in the garden, all the other nations are throughout the land of Eden. Okay? So the men that are speaking of are the people of Eden, those in the land of Nod and everywhere else. That's round about the garden. All right? So we understand that. Verse 2 that the sons of Yah, Lion of Adam, saw the daughters of men. The daughters of those people of the other nations that were outside the garden. All right. Of men that, or let's reread re re that. That the sons of Adam, or the, or the sons of Yah, who are the sons of Adam, <clears throat> saw that the daughters of men, the people outside the garden, that they were fair, they were attractive, they were good looking. And it took them wise of all which they chose. So the sons of Adam started marrying and intermingling with those people of the other nations. All right. So keep this in mind. All right. Now, <clears throat> verse three, and the Most High said, or and Yah said, "My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh." Yet his days shall be in 120 years. So the Most High curtailed the years of men. Okay? Now, verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God, Lion of Adam, came in unto the daughters of men, people of the other nations, and they bare children unto them, the same became mighty men, which were men of old, which were of old, men of renown. What this is saying here is sons of Adam, 
after Adam was kicked out of his garden and he started having some children, his children start mixing and mingling with those people of the other nations. That's what it's saying. And in the time frame in which there was the mixing between the sons of God and the sons of men, or between the sons of Adam and the daughters of these other peoples, there were giants in the earth. What this does not say, <clears throat> it does not say when the sons of Adam laid down with the daughters of these nations that it produced giants. It doesn't say that. <clears throat> okay. It just says it just says plainly during the time of this mixing, which is not to be done, during the time of this mixing, when the sons of Yah, who are the line of Adam, and the daughters of men, who are the daughters of these other people in Eden, when they start laying down together and producing children, these children became great men in the earth. They became men of renown. Okay? But while they were doing this, which was incorrect, while they were doing that, there were giants in the earth during those times. Once again, it does not say that because of this mixing, the result of this mixing produced giants. It does not say that at all. Okay? Now, we have read 1 through 5. One second. One second. All right, we're in Genesis chapter 6. We're going to read... Uh, We'll read verse 5, chapter 6, verse 5, 6, and 7. And this is going to make a few things clear in another point. Then we're going to Ezekiel. <clears throat> All right. We're at Genesis, and we have read verse 4. Now we're going to read verse 5, 6, and 7. We are in Genesis chapter 6. And now we will read verse 5, 6, and 7 to make a few things clear. Okay? All right. Genesis chapter 6, and we're at verse 5. And y'all saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented y'all that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. Most high has emotions. Remember that. Verse 7. And Yah said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air. For it repented me that I have made them. Now, <clears throat> what we're seeing here is that, you know, everyone wants to speak of the fact that God knows my heart and all of that. Yes, he does. The Most High says here clearly, that the thoughts of your heart is evil continually. That's all men. <clears throat> so nowhere, no how was a man ever perfect. So this goes out to the individual that wrote on the wrote on the bottom in the comments that you know Adam is not like a regular man and, and he was made by God's hand, etc. etc. Look. The Most High makes the cripple. The Most High makes the blind. The Most High makes the lame. The Most High makes the dumb. I guess you haven't figured that out. <clears throat> so this thing that God made Adam, and Adam was supposed to be perfect because he was made by God, you can't find that in here. <clears throat> the Most High said the thoughts of man is evil continually. And he regretted, okay? Shows, shows here clearly that he repented that he had made man because he was just so foul in his thought patterns. And not only that, once thought precedes their action, so you think foul, you're going to do foul. All right? So this thing that God made a perfect man, I don't know what you're talking about because the Most High makes plain, he tells you plainly, he makes the lame, the dumb, the crippled. He creates the evil and the good. He's responsible for all these things. So, ah, let's continue. Hard to argue with those who have idols in their heart 
and the Most High will not allow them to see anything. So when you have conversation with them, you have to plant a few seeds and keep going. There's no need to argue with those who the Most High have cut off because of their idolatry. So we see clear here that the Most High is indicating to us that the natural thought patterns of men are evil. And this is continual. And he, sure, he surely and certainly did not like this. Okay, now, let's jump to Ezekiel chapter 34. Ezekiel chapter 34. Ezekiel chapter 34, we're going to discuss and make plain when we start talking about beasts to the field and trees and all of that. Now, in the video before this, we had covered this understanding in Ezekiel chapter 31. But in this lesson, we're going to use Ezekiel chapter 34. All right. Okay. Ezekiel, excuse me. Ezekiel chapter 34. Get a sip of water. All right. Ezekiel chapter 34. We'll start at verse 1. We're going to read the whole chapter. All right. Ezekiel chapter 34 verse 1 reads, and the word of Yah came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. That's his leaders, the governors, who you call the kings. You can also call them the prince. Okay? Prince, governor. Okay? Those are what you would call erroneously the kings. All right? Shepherds also are those who lead the people. Your kings, sons of David. <clears throat> Okay, your prophets, <clears throat> your priests, <clears throat> all right, prophets who are known as seers of old time. All right, verse two, son, son, of, son of man, prophesy against the shepherds, against the leaders of Israel. <clears throat> prophesy and say unto them, thus saith Yah, the strong one unto the shepherds, woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flock? Okay, woe. To the shepherds destruction to the leaders of Israel because instead of them feeding them i.e. this law what the leaders were doing were making themselves fat and they were making themselves fat through the people i.e. Eli and his sons <clears throat> All right. And that is the same thing that these preachers are doing, teaching idolatry, fleecing the flock for their monies, living the high life, living fat. Most high has got something for you. You might want to get out of that idolatry. Teach your people, feed them this law and repent for the foul things that you're doing. It's just a suggestion to you. All right. <clears throat> Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherd feed the flock? That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to feed the flock of Israel. This law, this knowledge, verse 3. Ye eat the fat, and ye clothe you with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye fed not the flock. The, flock. the disease have ye not strengthened. Neither have ye healed th that which was sick. Neither have ye bound up that which was broken. Neither have ye brought again that which was driven away. Neither have ye sought that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty have you ruled them. That goes for the governors, the princes, and everyone else. Okay? So everyone is pretty much out for self. And are taking advantage of the people. Okay. Uh, they're not giving them anything to strengthen them. They're not giving them this law. They're not protect protecting them. They're not giving shelter unto them. Every man seeks and goes after his own way. 
and seek to increase his own house okay you can call it greed all right greed and selfishness now <clears throat> verse 5 of Ezekiel chapter 34 and they were scattered because there is no shepherd there's no leadership and they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered so the house of Israel is scattered and became meat to the beast of the field what does that mean when we were scattered were lions and tigers just eating us up no it doesn't mean that the beast of the field are the men of these other nations all right so these are the beasts of the field when we were scattered they ate us up they consumed us they killed us they enslaved us they raped us castrated us we were the prey <laughs> All right, so they preyed upon us. Okay, we were the victim. We were their victims. Put it that way. Okay, so we became meat onto them. They feed off of us. They feed off of our labor and everything else. Okay, so we became the whipping boys of the nations. Okay, the scornful ones. <clears throat> now, verse six. My sheep wandered. Through all the mountains and upon every high hill, yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth. We were scattered. He did this. And none did search or seek after them. Verse 7. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of Yah. As I live, saith Yah, surely because my flock became a prey. I just said that. We were a prey to all these beasts of the field. These other nations. <clears throat> and my flock became meat to every beast of the field we became the victims of all these other nations <clears throat> because there was no shepherd neither did any shepherd search for my flock but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not the flock in other words the shepherds of the most high those who were placed as our leaders have been selling us out since the days of old they're doing it right now <clears throat> All those that you see, the self-appointed leaders of quote-unquote black people, we are the house of Israel. <clears throat> All those self-appointed leaders are doing exactly this. We have to bear witness because that which was done in the days of old is what's being done right now. And that's how we can see this because we can read it. And we can bear witness to it. So all the self-appointed leaders right now of our people are actually feeding the flock. They are much more wealthy than the people of their congregation, so to speak. Okay? And they are in line and in league with our enemies. And they have sold us out, have fleeced the flock, and the Most High is going to make them pay for this. Verse 7, verse 9, excuse me. Therefore, all ye shepherds, hear the word of Yah. So those of you who are these preachers teaching idolatry, leading our people astray, in bed with our enemies. Most high has got some words for you. Verse 10. Thus saith Yah, behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand. You're going to pay. <clears throat> and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves anymore. He's going to cut off your benzes and your big houses and your Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday money collecting. It's going to cut it out. <clears throat> for I will deliver my flock from their mouth, and they may not be meat for them. What's going to happen to you is, Most High is going to deliver all our people that's in your little church, and you're leading them astray with his idol. He's going to get them out of there. And, and you're going to pay for all that you have done in leading the sheep astray. And this also pertains to all those of the nations, the beast of the field, the other nations that have taken advantage of this flock, these people called Israel, our people. <clears throat> All right. Verse 11. <clears throat> For thus saith Yah, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. <clears throat> As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep 
and will deliver them out of all the places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. In the day of Yah, when he returns to gather the house of Israel out of all the nations where he scattered them, Deuteronomy chapter 30. But before he delivers us in that fashion, we've got to return to his law. All right. But he's going to seek out his flock, the sheep of his pasture, the house of Israel. Verse 13. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries. We're in many countries right now scattered. And he's going to come get us. And will bring them to their own land. And feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country. Verse 14. And I will feed them in a good pasture, and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. There shall they lie in a good fold, and in a fat pasture shall they, shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. Verse 15. And I will feed my flock, and I will cause them to lie down, saith Yah. Verse 16. And I will seek that which was lost, and bring again that which was driven away, because we were driven away for our disobedience, just like Adam was driven away. And Cain was driven away. And anyone else that chose not to walk in the confines of the Most High's law was driven away. And will bind up that which was broken. And will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. Those who have made themselves fat and strong off of the flock. If you have abused Israel. Most High is going to break you. Okay, he's going to destroy you. That goes for the shepherds of Israel, and that goes for the beast of the field that has used us for meat. The beast of the field being men of the other nations. And I will feed them with judgment. That which you have done shall be done unto you. That's judgment. Verse 17. And as for you, O my flock, this goes to Israel, he's speaking to you. Thus saith Yah, behold, I will judge between cattle and cattle. Do you think he's going to judge between cow and a goat? No. Cattle's beast of the field. These are people. Different types of people. All right. Different nations of people. All right. Now, while we're on nations, let me touch on that. There is a misconception between what a nation is and what a country is. And let me give you some clarification on that. America is not a nation. America is a country. It is a landmass that has borders or boundaries. <clears throat> so it's a sovereign country. <clears throat> it is not a nation. <clears throat> A nation is a bloodline of people. <clears throat> Misraim, Egypt, that is a nation. <clears throat> the geographical location and its outline or its boundaries makes Egypt the landmass. <clears throat> China. <clears throat> Chinese people are of a specific seed line. <clears throat> China, the country, is a landmass with borders. A specific geographical location where Chinese people dwell. So if you're living there, you are two things. One, you're a Chinese man in China. China, the landmass, is your country. <clears throat> your nationality, your race, so to speak, that's your nation. So a Chinese man born in Africa don't make him African. <clears throat> a Chinese man born in Zimbabwe, he may be a Zimbabwean citizen, but that's not his nation. Nations of bloodline. Countries can be made up of just about anyone. 
Okay. Now, speaking of that, every nation was given a specific area in which to dwell. <clears throat> now, with that said, at no time, what you have in America and many other different nations, you have a mixing of many different nations. This was never meant to be. This is incorrect. And we're going to learn this. And that's one of the reasons why we suffer. So we were not to intermingle in this fashion. Every nation, every bloodline of people were designated a specific dwelling place. And we were not to all mingle, dwell, speak the same language, eat the same food, partake in the same thing. It's the same thing that happened in the Tower of Babel. And that's why the Most High scattered men all through the earth. Because once we start doing this sort of thing, this collaboration of the many different nations, then evil becomes multiplied in the earth. And men start transgressing their bounds. <clears throat> Want to build towers to the heavens and whatever else. So, keep in mind a nation, a nation is a bloodline of people, a country just happens to be the landmass in which that nation lives. Keep that in mind. All right, now let me get back to where I was. I've lost my spot. <clears throat> okay, let's go back to, let's go back to verse one second. Okay, I will feed him with judgment. Okay, now we were at verse 17, and we're in Ezekiel chapter 34. And as for you, O my flock, as for you, O Israel, thus saith Yah, behold, I judge between cattle and cattle, between the rams and the he goats, cattle and cattle, different nations. Seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture, but ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures, and to have drunk of the deep waters, but you must foul the residue with your feet. So, imagine this. <clears throat> the foul man, the wicked man, he'll drink of the good water, but he will defile the water or pollute the water so no one else can drink it after he's done so the foul man he wants what you have even if he doesn't need it <clears throat> just because you want it I don't want you to have it I'm going to take it just because I don't want you to have it that's the spirit and the mindset of the evil doer Verse 19, as for my flock, they eat that which ye have trodden with your feet, and they drink that which ye have fouled with your feet. So the house of Israel, the other beast of the field, have taken advantage of us, the other people of the nations. <clears throat> they give us the scraps of what they have eaten after they have already eaten taking the best of it all right they give us that which they have trodden upon that's what it's saying right here verse 20 therefore thus saith Yah unto them behold I even I will judge between the fat cattle and between the lean cattle cattle I hope you're not thinking steer and cow we're talking about people. Okay? We are talking about people. The lean would be Israel. Because we don't have anything. We're the poorest of the earth. The fat cattle, those of the other nations who have made themselves fat at our expense. Now, let's go verse 21. Because ye have trust, have thrust with side and with shoulder, and pushed all the diseased with your horns, till ye have scattered them broad. Verse 4, Therefore will I save my flock. He's not talking about saving everybody. 
talking about saving his flock. In order for you to be saved, you have to be in trouble. The other nations don't have to be saved from anything. They have everything. They have all the wealth. They have all the land. They have all the guns, bullets, knives, planes, trains, automobiles. They have it all. They don't need to be saved from anything. But the Most High said he's going to save his flock, his sheep, Israel. <clears throat> Once again, verse 22, Therefore will I save my flock, and they shall no more be a prey. We will no longer be taken advantage of, but advantage of by the beast of the field, the other nations who have conspired against the house of Israel. Psalms 83, Most High lists his enemies by name that are against his people. I'm going to reread verse 21. Because you have thrust with side and shoulder and pushed all the diseased with your arms, till ye have scattered them abroad. 22, therefore will I save my flock, and they shall no more be a prey, and I will judge between cattle and cattle. Verse 23, and I will set up one shepherd over them, one leader, and he shall feed them, even my servant David. David the prince, David the governor, <clears throat> David the captain. He shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd, leader. Because David is of the house of Judah, Judah the scepter holder, Judah the lawgiver. Verse 24. And I, Yah, will be their strong one, and my servant David, a prince among them. Once again, David is not a king. There is but one king in Israel, and there is one king in the whole entire earth. And that is Yah, the Most High himself. David is a prince. David is known as a counselor. David is also a governor. He's a prince. He's a governor. That's it. Okay, he's not a king. There's but one king in Israel. That's the most high. And there's the one king of the earth. And that's the most high. So David can be referred to as a governor. He can be referred to as a prince. All right. Now. <clears throat> all right. Let me reread verse 24. And I, Yah, will be their strong one, and my servant David, a prince among them. I, Yah, have spoken it. Verse 25. And I will make with them a covenant of peace, and will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land. And they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. All right. Let me read that. Verse 25. Ezekiel chapter 34. And I will make with them a covenant of peace with them who with them, the house of Israel, with his flock. He's going to make a covenant of peace with us and will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land. Evil beast, men of other nations in the land of Israel that don't belong there. Trespassing. I told you this man was a trespasser. And they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. So the Most High is going to remove this beast out of the land. So those who are sitting on our land right now, these men of these other nations, he's going to remove them. Excuse me. Verse 26. And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in his season. And there shall be showers and blessings. Verse 27. And the tree of the field shall yield her fruit, and the earth shall yield her increase, and they shall be safe in their land, and they shall know that I am Yah, when I have broken the bands of their yoke, and delivered them out of the hand of those that serve themselves of them. So we will know that it is the Most High when he has broken the bands and the yoke of our oppressors. And our oppressors can no longer feed themselves off of us. And we will no longer be prey unto them. We will no longer be taken advantage of, abused, etc. Verse 28. And they shall no more be a prey to the heathen. Who are the heathen? Are the nations. Who are the beast? 
are the nations. Neither shall the beast of the land devour them, the other peoples of the land. <clears throat> but they shall dwell safely, and none shall make them afraid. Verse 29. And I will raise up from them a plant of renown. Remember. Remember this garden thing. All right. And they shall be no more consumed with the hunger in the land, neither bear the shame of the heathen any more. So we bear the shame of the heathen, these nations that's in the midst of us. Verse 30. Thus shall they know that I, Yah, their strong one, am with them, and that they, even the house of Israel, are my people, saith Yah, and my flock, the flock of my pasture are men. And I am your strong one, saith Yah. So we're seeing here clearly Ezekiel chapter 34 that Israel is this flock. Okay? And how we're being taken advantage of by the beast of the field who are the other nations. Because once once Adam had transgressed and he was cast out of that garden where he found himself, him and Eve, is in the midst of other nations who they never even knew existed. <clears throat> okay? So they're out there with some different people. And so therefore, they're gaining some new experiences because of their transgression. They found themselves in places that they really didn't have to be had they not transgressed. Okay, so here we are in these many nations of the earth today in lands that we really should not be or should not have been and we would not have known these people were even out here had we not transgressed. And the fact that we had transgressed, we were kicking or kicked, excuse me, we were kicked out of the land. So now we're in the midst of all types of strange people that we didn't even know speaking languages that we didn't even know, worshiping gods that we didn't know back then and we tend to cling to right now. And so what's being done right now is the Most High is making the crooked things straight so Israel can realize exactly who they are, where they are, why they're here, and we are to correct some things. That way we can return back to the land that was promised to our forefathers. We're not to set up shop in these nations. We were not meant to be here in the first place. We are here because of our transgression. Keep that in mind. Now, we will finish up. We will go into Isaiah chapter 14 to finish up this lesson. Isaiah chapter 14, and we will read verse 1 through 23. Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. We will read verse 1 through 23. Verse 1 of Isaiah chapter 14 reads, For Yah will have mercy on Jacob, and yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Think of the strangers as people who are outside the garden, other nations, strangers. Verse 2. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of Yah for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives there were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. This is the role reversal. All the nations, we have been to pray to them. We have been servants unto them in all these many nations. There will be a role reversal. There will be servants unto us. The Most High is going to change that. And many of these people of the nations, they know this. And it's a vexation for them to understand this report. So, the suffering that we're enduring right now is a temporary thing. We have served them for centuries. They will serve us forever. Verse 3. And it shall come to pass, 
in the day that Yah shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from thy hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve. Verse 4 that thou shalt take of this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hath thou oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. Verse 5. Yah has broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. Verse 6. He who smote the people with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger, is persecuted and none hindereth. So, the evil doer is saying here the king of Babylon. All right, and that will take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say these things. All right. So he who ruled the people with a continual stroke and ruled against nations in anger, okay, he's going to be brought down. <clears throat> Verse seven: The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth in singing. Verse 8. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid down, no feller has come up against us. So the evildoer, even the trees of the forest, shall say, Since this evil man has been brought down to the pit, he has been stripped. The trees are happy because they're like, hey, no one has taken any axe and been chopping us down. So the evil man is chopping down the trees. And when he's brought down, the forest will be happy because the man has been chopping down the trees and tearing up the forest. Now, verse 9. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It has raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. Verse 10. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? So, all the nations, all the nations are going to want to know, and the nations and the kings is going to look at this mighty nation and ask him, Hey, um, are, are you as weak as us? Have you become as weak as we are? Because the mighty nation is going to be stripped. Okay? So keep in mind what the Most High did to Nebuchadnezzar. Okay? Uh, he humbled him. Think of what he did to the Pharaoh. He raised the Pharaoh up for the purpose of destroying him. Okay? So that's no difference for some of these other nations who are being raised up to this pomp. They're pompous, they're arrogant, and being raised to a height because the Most High is going to bring them down in the sight of all the nations. So stand by for that. All right. Verse 10, All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Verse 10, Thy pomp, arrogance, pride, is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vows, the worm is spread under thee, and the worm cover thee. So this high mighty nation, full of wickedness, their arrogance, their pomp is going to be brought down to the grave. Verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? It's the point we wanted to get to. We're dealing with this serpent, right? This man. So we're seeing here where this nation is being described as a powerful nation, a nation full of pomp, pride, arrogance, evil, okay, unrighteousness. So now the question is asked, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? So, how are you fallen from heaven? Uh, have you actually fallen from heaven? No. How have you fallen from such a high place? Pedestal, if you will. How have you come from being this powerful nation? And how have you fallen to such a low stature to where you have become as weak as we? 
is the question that's being presented here. Let's continue. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. Okay. So if you are thinking that there was some, that Lucifer was some angel that fell out the sky, <laughs> here you have him saying he's going to go. He's going to ascend there. He's going to try to do that. Didn't say he came from there. <clears throat> All right. So this man is going to try to go ascend to heaven. Didn't say he came from there. This is no angel. This is a man. And we're going to make this clear in a minute. Verse 12, once again, how art thou fallen from heaven? A high place, a lofty place. O Lucifer, son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground? which did weaken the nations. So this man, Lucifer, is actually sitting on a high pedestal above the nations. He's in a high place. He ain't, he's not in heaven. He's in a high place or a high position. And what he's doing, he's weakening nations. And there's many ways to do this. Supply them with guns. Keep them in conflict tear up their government, cause division, confusion, and turmoil in the midst of its people. Mislead them, misdirect them, misinform them. Verse 13, for thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. So this man like I've said before, this serpent, this man, is a transgressor. <clears throat> He's also a trespasser. So what he wants to do, he wants to go to the most high dwelling place. That's heaven. So you see now why the most high put those cherubs to protect that tree of life because man in his thought process <clears throat> there are no limits to what he would try to do as far as malicious intent okay so this man right here is saying clearly I will ascend into heaven okay for thou hast said in thy heart he said this in the heart I will ascend into heaven I will exalt my throne above the stars of Yah. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Okay? It's not going to do that. We're talking about Jerusalem. We're talking about the cities of Zion. Okay? So he wants to do all of these things. What he wants to do, he wants to go into the most highest dwelling place. That's trespassing. He wants to go into the holy city on the mount and, and occupy that spot as well. This is a man talking. Verse 14, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. So this man seeks to be like the Most High. Imagine that. Verse 15, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Hell is nothing but the grave. The pit is nothing but the grave. That's what hell is. If you're going to be brought down to hell, that simply means you're going to be brought down to the grave. If we're saying you're going to be brought down to the pit, that means you're going to be buried. You're going to be dead. That's what the pit is. That's what hell is. Death. Hell is not some lake of fire someplace. You've been lied to. All right. Verse 15. Let's read that. Yet thou hast... Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit, death. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble and did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house 
of his prisoners. Verse 18, all the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house. Verse 19, but thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, and as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword, that go down to the stones of the pit, as a carcass trodden and on their feet. Verse 20. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land, and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. Verse 12. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them the serpent seed, saith Yah of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, saith Yah. I will also make it a possession for the bittern and pools of water, and I will I will sweep it with the besom of destruction, saith Yah of hosts. So, what we're seeing here is seed of evildoers. That's what this speaks to. It doesn't speak to a man falling out of the sky. It speaks to a man in a lofty position who is arrogant, who is prideful, who is evil who is contrary to the Most High. And that man and his seed shall be removed. That man's intention is to be like the Most High. That man's intention is to sit in the sides of the North. Not happening. His intention is to go into the heavens, into the Most High's dwelling place. So his intent is to actually do a few things. One, Trespass the Most High. Tre trespass is, is dwelling place. That's number one. And certainly to speak against the Most High and His Word. So when we're dealing with the serpent seed, if we want to identify the serpent seed, there's a few things that we must do. Number one, this snake went into the garden, <clears throat> okay? And he made his, his, his business to purposely and maliciously give counsel that were contrary to the Most High's work. And he did this knowingly. So he is unscrupulous, untrustworthy, okay, and has no regard for the Most High's law. Eve's error was the fact that she disregarded the counsel of the Most High to follow after the counsel of some man. <clears throat> Adam's mistake and his error was that he disregarded the counsel of the Most High and sought the counsel of the woman. <clears throat> and because they both disregarded the counsel of him who made them they had to pay because they chose to listen to a man instead of the most high who created them and gave them strict and specific commandment so you've got to ask yourself are you as adam <clears throat> are you as eve <clears throat> when the most high give his instructions and he laid it out clearly in his book of the prophets it's clearly in here are you are you turning and saying when you hear the words of the most high are you turning and saying well this man the snake told me this the woman told me that Paul told me this Peter told me that are you that person? So, once again, what this all boils down to, you have an evildoer, 
you have a serpent, a man who are in who is in total opposition to the most high, and what he does is he teaches and speaks contrary to the most high's instruction. He is a trespasser. He goes into lands and places he's got no business. His intent is to be like the most high. So if you're going to be like the most high, let me see some of the things you're going to do. You're going to try to play the most high. Take a woman and try to make her into a man. Take a man and make her into a woman. And pass laws that contradict the laws of the most high. Go to different nations, transgress your boundaries, pass the boundaries that you were designated to be in. Go into other places and other spaces and teach other nations and counsel them all in opposition to the Most High's word. And so if you're looking for the serpent seed, what you need to do is this. First, go into the Most High's law. Look at it carefully. Read it. Study it. And do it. Next, once you understand what the Most High's instructions were, next what you are to do is take a look at anyone or any group of people who have gone to different land masses, places where they don't belong, and have tried to teach anything pertaining to God. And whatever it is they teach, take whatever they teach and what they have taught, and then go back into the Most High's Law. And what you will see is there's a specific group of people on this earth that have gone into different lands, have gone into different countries, and addressed many different nations, based people, and gave them information that is totally contrary to the Most High's word. And these people that have done this know this. They know what they're doing is in contrary. It's contrary to the Most High's law. They know it. Their fathers did it before them. They are the serpent seed. Not hard to find. So, <clears throat> once again, it's late night. It's currently 1138. But I wanted to get this lesson out. That way you guys, that way everyone can get a clearer or a better understanding of who this serpent is. It's a man. A man that refuses to obey the Most High. A man that wants to be on par with the Most High. A man that's evil in all his thoughts and his doings. <clears throat> and a man that speaks contrary to the Most High knowingly and maliciously. So be cautious of what you're listening to and who you're listening to. What I suggest to you is very simple, is that you take a hold of the Most High's law, read it, study it, and do it, and be committed to it. Well, all I'm going to ever tell you if you come to this channel is the Most High and His law, and do it. Once again, anyone that speaks contrary to the Most High's law is going to get you killed. Failure to follow instruction will lead to your own destruction. Adam and Eve didn't follow the instruction they were given. Look what happened to them. Okay? The man from Judah, in that video, he told that other prophet exactly what his instructions were, yet he went against it. Eve told that man exactly what her instructions were, but yet she went against it. So stop following the precepts of the precepts of men. This Peter, Paul, and Andrew and all these other people. These are not prophets. Stop following after the serpent seed and the instructions of the serpent seed's children. That's your hint. Okay? Stick to the Most High's word. Turn, face Jerusalem from all the nations in which we have been scattered. Let's lift our hands in prayer. Admit our faults. And teach the law of the Most High to our children and do it. 
All right, Israel, it's been one hour, 39 minutes. We'll try to wrap it up in a one hour, 40 minutes. And I hope this lesson has been uh, been of some help to you and to give you some clarification on the fact that in this garden, these are nations. These are many nations of people. And oh, think of this. When the Most High made birds of the air, think of all the birds there. Are. You've got parrots. You've got macaws. You've got parakeets. You've got African gray parrots. You've got a bunch of birds in the parrot family alone. Okay? You've got doves. You've got eagles. You've got ostriches. You've got offsprays. I mean, you've got so many different birds you can't count them. And if you line them up, they're all very different in size, color. They sing different. They look different. They have different characteristics to them. So when you hear God made man, <laughs> You've got to think. A man can look more than one way. So you have to think about that. So when you hear the man, the most high made birds of the air, just think of how many birds there are and how different they are. So when you hear the most high made man, I mean, you could have made all types of men. They don't have to look a certain way. So kind of keep that in mind, okay, as far as all these different nations. They don't all have to look the same. Uh, so so keep that keep that in mind when you're thinking about men. Think about birds. When the most high made birds, those birds don't look the same. They don't sing the same song. They don't fly the same way or at the same heights. So keep those things in mind and try not to limit your thinking. Uh, and, and really get in this book and study it. All right, Israel, it's been it's been a long lesson. I hope it's been of some good to you. Uh I've asked the Most High to instill this knowledge upon me and this wisdom that I may be of some help to this people, this people who, his people, the house of Israel, my people. Okay, so I hope it's been of some help to you. I'll continue to study, stay in the book, and walk after the Most High's law. Do not look to the left or the right. Because if you do, that's when you get the corrections. You get hit in the mouth. You don't want that. All right, Israel, thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Peace, Israel.